Hello, today I'm going to be walking you through a senior financial analysis test where you will be forecasting the financials from September to December 2025 using the actuals from January to August 2025. The file will be available on my website for you to download and all the details will be within the home tab over here. Our objective for this case is to forecast the company's financials and then assess the forecast results against the budget and provide some commentaries. You're provided the FY25 transactions, which are the transactional details from January to August. You are also provided the product utilization details, which are the drivers of your revenue. The headcount details, which are the driver of your compensation details. And then you have your budget. Within the home tab, you're also provided some comments, which will help you understand the business model of the company and considerations that you need to take in for the forecast. We will review the comments later when we begin the actual forecast, but with these details, let's first begin by creating our forecast template. Every time you build a financial model, I highly recommend that you have a standard format where the financial metrics are in the rows and then your periods are separated by columns. So we want to bring in the actuals from January to August and then set up a forecast period from September to December. So I'm going to start with building my period fields first. So January 31st, 2025. And then I'm just gonna use the end of month function. Above, I'm just gonna indicate which periods are actuals and which one are forecast. And now I want to bring in my financial items over here. Now, every time you're working on a forecast, you want to set up your template at a high level that reflects the financial statements of the company. So right now you will see that we have GL details, but we also have something called category, which are the items that we actually present on our income statement. So we're going to first begin by building out our forecast template by bringing in the unique list of category. The easiest way to do this is to use a unique function to just bring in all the unique values here. Now we don't have details of the income statement of the company, but we have to make some assumptions based on the names of the financial items. The way I'm able to determine that hosting cost is cost of goods sold is based on the director comments here, which we will go over after. But when you set up the template, it's fine to just classify this as operating expense as well. But in real cases, if you're able to classify these items to reflect a realistic income statement, it'll make you look more professional. And now that we have the template, let's start by bringing in the actual financial details. First, I am going to set up an additional column called period, and I'm just going to use the end of month on the booking date. And this is just to align the periods to the period headers that we set up over here because these are all the last days of the month. So we just wanna make sure that the booking dates also reflect the last day of the month. And then we can use the summits function to bring in the amount where the period matches the period that we have set here. And then the category matches the category that we set here. And then I could just honestly copy paste all of these for the rest. And now from here, we have to begin the forecast. Before we begin, let's quickly analyze the director's comments. So the comments mentioned that our main business is selling our digital product and we charge our customers based on their gigabyte consumption every month. If we just take a quick look, we can see that we have user IDs, we have the dates, the gigs used, the rate that they're charged per gig, and then the amount billed. If we keep reading the comments, it says that we had anticipated that our new client growth would increase as we progress throughout the year, but it's been decreasing. Now, what this means is that as you analyze this data, you will come to realize that there are new user IDs that come up every month. These are the new clients that we acquire. So you will also have to analyze this detail to accurately forecast 
the product revenue that we have here. And just to finish off the comments for number one, it says that we don't expect our customers to churn, so we assume a 0% churn rate in the forecast period. So it just means that we don't expect to lose any customers. Um, the other comments are not related to revenue, so let's actually first begin by analyzing our product utilization details. Now, to best tackle this revenue forecast, what you want to do is, again, set up another forecast template specifically for revenue. So I'm going to, again, set up the months from January 31st, 2025. And what I want to do here is assess total users and then assess total gigs. So let's first begin by bringing in the total users. This is actually quite complicated. The very first thing that I'm going to do, however, is to again set up a period and just use end of month on the date. I highly recommend for you to get into the habit of converting days into the last date so that it matches the value of the headers that you use for your templates. Now to get the total users, I am going to filter the user ID where the period equals the period that we're analyzing and then I could use the unique function. So this will bring me the total unique IDs that were active in January 2025. You might also want to just double check that there aren't any amount builds of zero because if there were, then you might have to filter out people who weren't built because it means that they were not active. And now that you have those list, you can use the counter function, which will count all the unique IDs within that period and then drag it across. You'll notice that September to December is one, which we're just going to remove. One more note here is that for this data set, each row of transaction for that month is unique to a user ID. So if this method is too complicated, what you can do is just count ifs the period that matches the period that you're analyzing. It should get you the same result. This is much easier. But in a real data set, there might be multiple transactions related to one client. So this method is technically more accurate in most scenarios. And then for total gigabytes, we are going to sum ifs the gigs used where the period matches the period that we're analyzing. And now what you can do is calculate average gigs per user. And I'm just going to divide the total gigs by the total users. So this shows you on average how many gigs each user generally consumes per month. And now you just have to forecast out your total users per month and then multiply by average gigs per user that you're going to determine. And then that will get you your total gigs and then your revenue. So we have to forecast out the total users. But here we need to consider the comment where it said our new client growth is actually decreasing. So we also have to determine new clients per month. And the way that I'm going to do that is by setting up a column called new. And this also gets a bit complicated, but this really shows how good you are at data analysis. Now, the way that we're going to determine whether a user ID is new is by counting whether that user ID existed in the previous month. If they didn't, then in this month, we're going to classify them as new. So we're going to if count ifs, the user ID is the current ID that we're assessing and the period is end of month minus one, which is the prior month. If this count is zero, then we're going to return new, otherwise empty. All the IDs in January are going to return new because we don't have data for December 31st, 2024. So we're going to layer our formula where if the period equals January 31st, 2025, we want to return empty. Otherwise, run the other condition. So we're essentially going to be missing one month of data. So we won't be able to assess how many new clients we acquired in January. 2025. So we now have a separate data set that will determine which clients are new. And then for our new clients, what we can do is just copy over the total users formula. And I am going to multiply this condition by this other condition, 
where this equals new. So we now have our total new clients, but we now have this new information where our new client volume is gradually decreasing. We can see that August new client volumes are almost half of what we saw in February, and we can assess month over month decrease percentage. So we can assume that new clients is going to continue to decrease 10% every month, but there's real no right answer here. It's just based on your assumption and how well you can justify it. From what I see, our new client volume has already halved since February, so it might not actually decrease that much going forward and you can see that in July and August they've decreased a little bit less so I would apply an average of the historical decrease in new clients and then I'm going to also gradually decrease this by 2% every month so then we can 11 times 1 plus 10%. So this looks a little bit more reasonable. So then in terms of total users, we're just going to plus this because we know that we're not going to lose any customers. And then for average gigs per user, let's just average it. Because when I eyeball these numbers, none of them seem significantly off than the other. And then for our total gigs, we're going to multiply these two together. And then to get our revenue, what we're going to do is multiply 772 by 0 0.3. And this should be our revenue. So we know that this is going to be our revenue. So let's just link this over here and continue it.